Over the past few weeks, we have shared with you reflections and ways to allow our hearts to be expanded in Christ. As we conclude this series of reflections, I invite you to take the pulse, so to speak, of your spiritual heart. Take a few deep breaths, close your eyes, and just notice. Take notice of your spiritual heart. How would you describe it? Is it enlarged with love? Or is it closed in upon itself? Over the past weeks, you have heard from our sisters about various times when we are invited to let God enlarge our hearts. Those include times in the desert, times when we are experiencing acedia or spiritual boredom, times of forgiveness, both when we are in need of forgiveness and when we need to offer forgiveness times when we are immersed in the paschal mystery present in our own lives. You've also heard of ideas and ways that you might allow God to expand your heart through prayer, through music, through experiencing life fully through our five senses. Hopefully, these reflections have helped you to pause and to reflect on the ways that Christ desires to dwell within you, in your heart, and to open that heart so that your heart truly can overflow with the delight of the love of God. As we conclude this series of reflections, I'd like to focus today upon the story of the Transfiguration. Recall the story. Jesus takes three of his apostles, Peter, James, and John, with him up to the top of the mountain. And there he is transfigured before them. The apostles hear Jesus speaking with Moses, with Elijah. And they also hear the voice of God. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. The three apostles were given a glimpse into the glory that would await Jesus after his passion, death, and resurrection. They had a glimpse, and they want to stay there. We understand that. Whenever we've had what we might term mountaintop experiences, we want to stay there. But as much as we wish, we can't. Like the three disciples, we have to leave the glory of the vision at the top of the mountain and return to everyday life. The apostles come down changed, and so do we. The three disciples who experienced the transfiguration have new information, even though Jesus tells them not to mention it to anyone else quite yet. They had seen with their own eyes the brilliance of Christ's glory. In seeing and hearing him talk to Elijah and to Moses, they realized that he was the fulfillment of the law and of the prophets. And they had heard the voice of God coming from the cloud, identifying who Jesus truly was and telling them what they need to do. This is my son. This is the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. This is my son, the beloved. These are the same words that were heard at the time of Jesus' baptism at the Jordan. Listen to him, the voice says to Peter, John, and James. Can you imagine? how they listened more carefully to Jesus when he spoke to them after having experienced this vision and having heard this command. 
In the Vatican Museum in Rome, there's a painting of the Transfiguration by Raffaello. And when I first saw this painting, I found myself just transfixed by it. I sat in the room and just tried to absorb it in all the many details that are in it. And I continue to be drawn to look at that painting. At the top, we have the three disciples witnessing the transfiguration of Jesus. At the bottom, though, we have what was going on simultaneously. While the three apostles and Jesus were at the top of the mountain, the other disciples were dealing with a man who had brought to them his epileptic son, seeking healing. They weren't able to cure him. It looks rather chaotic when you look at the painting, as the apostles and the man and the son and all the bystanders are dealing with this incident. For Jesus and the three disciples, the mountaintop experience doesn't last long. Because when they come down, this is what they're faced with. Jesus is faced with the crowd, with the disappointed father, and with the other nine apostles who seem to have failed at doing what he had taught them. How long must I put up with you, Jesus says. And the disciples ask later in private, why couldn't we cast it out? There is still more to learn. Their faith needs to continue to grow. And so it is with us. Daily life and its trials can make us easily forget the mountaintop experiences of faith and love. But our call is to keep our hearts open, to let them continue to expand, to let the vision of God's presence and love carry us through whatever trials of daily living come our way. We have to come down from the mountain but like the apostles, we too are changed by the experience there. St. Benedict tells us as we progress in this way of life and in faith, we shall run on the path of God's commandments, our hearts overflowing with the inexpressible delight of love. As you continue to progress in your way of life, may you run on the path of God's commandments and may your hearts overflow with the inexpressible delight of God's love. And may you continue to allow God to transform you and to expand your heart 